Ready? Good. You're live. Oh, sorry. Are we ready? Good morning. Welcome to our Monday Thursday service. As you can see, we haven't moved outside, but we have moved a tree inside. Uh, this is our prayer tree. So I'd really love that you tell me who you'd like me to pray for. And no need is too trivial. Um, you move a little forward, please. Sorry. You, not the stand. You. Okay. Sorry, am I disappearing behind the stand? Yeah. Let's do this. Um, so no need is too trivial. Um, if you're just worried about someone, um, please, um, if you're just isolated from someone, please send us their name. You can either um, just send me a personal message, um, send it on uh, email or Facebook or any way you can get hold of me. Um, and let's put the people we're praying for on our tree. So hopefully over Holy Week, we'll see our tree covered in um, leaves and flowers, I think we're going to do. So do let me know who you'd like to keep in your prayers. Um, I'm a little bit further forward, so we had some uh, administrative issues there. <laughs> We're going to start from our green book, so let's take a moment of quiet. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Now, normally we'd have our confession now, but I'm actually going to uh, hold that off until after the reading for reasons that will become obvious. So please turn over to page four. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all, to you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now, through the deep waters of death, you have brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. May Christ, your light, ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 42. I'm using the Church Bible, which is a New International Version Bible. But obviously, read along in any version of the Bible that you have with you. We'll just give you a moment. Uh, if in doubt, Psalms is sort of in the middle. <laughs> Open your Bible right in the middle. Psalm 42. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. 
Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. We're going to say our gospel canticle that we are sticking with um, until we meet together again. I hope by now you know this bit at least. The ransomed of the Lord shall return with singing, with everlasting joy upon their heads. So even if you don't have a green book, I'd like you to um, join in enthusiastically with that part. For those of you who do have a green book, um, the Song of the Wilderness is on page 46. The wilderness and the dry land shall rejoice. The desert shall blossom and burst into song. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weary hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to the anxious, be strong, fear not. Your God is coming with judgment, coming with judgment to save you. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame leap like a heart and the tongue of the dumb sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and the streams in the desert. The ransomed of the Lord shall return with singing and everlasting joy upon, with everlasting joy upon their heads. Joy and gladness shall be theirs and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We're going to have our gospel reading. I've actually taken the reading from the communion service for this morning. So it is today's reading, but it's um, it's the reading if we were having a communion service. But there are two things we commemorate here on Monday Thursday. Uh, we commemorate the institution of communion, of Jesus meeting together and breaking bread with his friends and with um, washing of the feet. So I wanted to um, read this uh, message from John, which is about the foot washing, as it seems so pertinent in these times of washing. This is John 13, verses 1 to 17, then 31 to 35. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set an example that you should do as I have done for you. Truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. When he was gone, Jesus said, uh, Judas had left. When he was gone, Jesus said, now the son of man is glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the son in himself and will glorify him at once. 
My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, it just struck me that this is such a time of washing, <laughs> such a time of, <laughs> I don't know how many, what you're saying. Are you singing happy birthday twice when you wash your hands? Are you uh, saying the Lord's Prayer? Are you just, you've got it in your head now, just about how long you need to wash front and back and thumbs. We're getting so good at that, aren't we? And I remember hearing a sermon on this passage and, and that little part where Peter says, um, wash everything and Jesus says no if you've washed you're clean but I need to wash your feet and I had this explained to me as you know once we come to Jesus he washes us clean we're washed clean in baptism and yet we still touch the world <laughs> we still touch difficult and dirty places and we need to come to Jesus to have the weariness of the world washed off us and maybe being locked up with your family, you're feeling a little weary and like you've been walking in poo, which the disciples would have been. And we need to come to Jesus just to have that touching of the world washed off us and, and us made clean again. We must allow Jesus to love us and care for us and take away the dirtiness and the burdens from our life. And so that was why I waited to say this, um, to say our confession, I want to think of us allowing Jesus to wash our feet, to take away the things that we haven't got right in these difficult days and to wash away our weariness as well. So we're going to turn back to page three if you have the book. Otherwise, please just join in with the amens. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Let us continue to allow God to wash us clean. We're going to say our Gospel Canticle, I'm going to have a drink, <clears throat> which is found on page six of the Green Book. There we go. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Now going to say our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our collect for Monday Thursday. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be partakers in his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. On our theme of washing and of hands and of cleansing and where we touch the world, I know many of you have heard um, Michael Rosen's poem and I thought for our prayers I would read Michael Rosen's poem. This is a poem he wrote in tribute to all the carers, all those who work to keep us well and it's called <clears throat> These Are the Hands. These are the hands that touch us first. Feel your head, find the pulse and make your bed. These are the hands that tap your back, test the skin, hold your arm, wheel the bin, change the bulb, fix the drip, pour the jug, replace your hip. These are the hands that fill the bath, mop the floor, flick the switch, soothe the saw, Burn the swabs, give us a jab, throw out the sharps, design the lab. These are the hands that stop the leaks, empty the pan, wipe the pipes, carry the can, clamp the veins, make the cast, log the dose and touch us last. gathering our prayers and praises into one. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me, clearing my throat again. Please send in your prayer requests for our lovely tree. I do not want to be standing in front of an empty tree. Please send us names. You can give us details, but God knows the details. If you just want to send us names, we'll make sure that every leaf and flower on here is a name of someone we're praying for, a family we're praying for. Please keep in touch. <laughs> Call us, phone us, go on the Facebook, go on the YouTube. We want to know how you are. Please take care of yourselves and let us know if you have any needs. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you and everyone you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.